Hey everyone, Blue here at Blue Bears Games. In today's video, we are going to be doing the upgrade guide for the Cabretti Cacophony Commander Precon from Streets of New Cabana. One thing you'll notice, <clears throat> there's a couple of slight differences in the way that this video is done compared to when that was done, and let me explain that real quick before we go into the upgrade guide. So, I did receive and unbox the Streets of New Cabana Commander Precon, specifically the Cabretti Cacophony one six months ago when I received it. However, as that happened, I was inundated with a lot of custom deck build orders over the you know, last six months I've been doing nothing but that, I'm finally starting to catch up. So what you see are differences in my advancements from six months ago to now, where this video is probably going to look a little bit better than that one did. On top of that, I also believe in that video I promised you that I would start splitting up the guide for the upgrades and the unboxing part to make the videos a little shorter, and this is my first attempt at doing so, hopefully it goes over well. So basically what I'm doing here is, I'm splitting them up for the purposes of those of you that like to watch unboxing videos, you can just watch the unboxing part of the video. And for those of you who like the upgrade guides or need to see some upgrades for the pre-cons, because we all do, I'll go ahead and release them separately so the video is not as long, you don't have to scroll through a whole bunch of stuff. So that's why I'm doing that. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the upgrade guide for the Capretti Cacophony Precon from Streets of New Capena. So as normal, I'm going to start off with the lands. And in the three-colored deck, we're going to be pretty heavy on the monetary side because three-colored decks are a little more expensive to fix. But let's fix some of that mana. You've got options in the dual land section. You've got OG duels, which are too expensive. you got some shock lands and some fetches, and I'm going to have a couple up there for you to see. Uh, you've got the bond lands and all that stuff. So, And I'm sure you can look them up each individually, which ones you can do. However, there's another couple options. You've got things like Thran Quarry, which I have listed here, and Forbidden Orchard. And with Forbidden Orchard, you're going to give your opponent a creature token, but, I mean, the amount of tokens that this deck should be able to create, you shouldn't really matter that much. After that, some token generations. You've got things like Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead is really good in this deck here. Uh, you're going to be able to, with in a three-colored deck with as many different lands you're going to have, Field of the Dead shouldn't have a problem hitting. you got things like Kerr Keep, which I wish they would reprint, pre reprint more often, but they just don't. you got some sack outlets like Mirren the Moaning Well for life gain, the same thing with High Market. And then some card draw, because you're not in very good colors for card draw. you got things like Bonder's Enclave, and my, my favorite one recently is War Room. So those are a couple of the lands that you can look at to upgrade. As far as ramp options, the good thing is we're here, we're in green, so I'm going to make my mention of my favorite ones to do. Nature's Lure and Three Visits. You can add a Far Seek in here. It should hit for more than it should in a two-color deck. And then I'm going to mention Spoils of Victory. It's a good one. You don't have to go search for a, uh, a Far on that one. You can search for all the rest. And then if you want to go Mana Rocks, I'm always going to suggest a Thought Vessel because of the no maximum hand size thing. But here's the good thing. The colors we're in, Liquid Metal Torque puts in a lot of extra work. I mention all the time how I like to put Liquid Metal Torque into red decks so you can turn things into artifacts. And then use Red's Artifact Destruction, but White and Green both have it as well, so good option there. As far as creatures go on some upgrades, you got a lot of options here. So we're going to start off with, like, Repeated Creature Token Generation. You got Dragon Broodmother is a really good one. You can also use, like, Adeline Resplendent Cathar. Uh, Dragon Lair Spider is a, a new one that I can suggest for you. And then Tender Shoot Dryad I like to use in Fungus decks, but it works really well here because it creates a lot of tokens on each opponent's turn. Some card draw options. Welcoming Vampire is an addition you can put in here. It's not the greatest, but most of the tokens are 1-1, one, one, so it should hit. You should be able to draw off that. Benny Brax, a newer one from a Commander uh, set recently. Great option for card draw. And then Esper Sentinel, in from I believe it was Modern Horizons, is a great option. Utility-wise, you got things like Elish Norn to buff up your tokens and to debuff all of your opponent's creatures. You've got Witty Roastmaster, because every time a token or any creature comes into play on your side, you can deal damage to every opponent. And then you've got... Uh, what is it? Perforos God of the Forge, because you'll be able to sling damage out to everybody. I have a Perforos deck myself. I like token generation with it. It's a good fit. Uh, you've got the Soul Sister action you can do here, since you're making so many creatures, especially in the token spot. You can go with Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, Suture Priest, and you can do that whole thing where all the different kinds of creatures that gain you life every time a creature comes into play, you can definitely do that. And the last thing I want to mention here is a finisher. You can do Crater Hoof Behemoth because of the amount of creatures you should have on the board. You should be able to swarm the board and win the game that way. Up next, we'll look at some of the options for spell upgrades. You've got targeted removal like stone swords to plowshares. There's already some targeted removal in here that's pretty good, so we can add to that. You can do mass board wipes like Hour of Reckoning, especially in a token deck like this that you can create. You'll be able to convoke it really easily. Corrosion Grip is good artifact and enchantment removal, but that has split second. And a new one I'll mention here is Pest Infestation. It's a great one for this deck. Some token generation cards that you can upgrade it would be something like Finale of Glory, Empty the Warrens, and what do we got here? White Sun Zenith might be a good option as well. Uh, and then the last one I'm going to mention here for token generation is probably something that needs a reprint badly is Arachnogenesis, okay? As far as some Wincon cards that you can use, so we have Crater Hoof as an option that I just mentioned, but on the actual spell side, you can look at Triumph of the Hordes for the Infect Win. You've got Overruns and Overwhelming Stampedes. And then the last one I'll mention is Finale of Devastation because that, that card really hits hard. It searches for a creature and then buffs all your creatures. It's a really good card. And speaking of tutors, 
on top of the finale of devastation for tutoring you can also do things like eldamri's call enlightened tutor and worldly tutor you can go get uh creatures and enchantments and artifacts with those so pretty good options not as good as blacks where you can go get any card but at least you can go get things that you need on the enchantment side of things, we've got some really good ones here. We're in white and green, so I'll mention the doublers. So Anointed Procession, of course. Then you've got Doubling Season and Primal Vigor. Great options in a token-creating deck. You've got some utility stuff like Cathar's Crusade, because you're making all those tokens, you'll buff them up. Cryptolithrite, so you can do a little ramp, so all those tokens can now tap, tap for mana. Or Shards is a good uh, defense mechanism. Marari's Wake is a buff and helps you ramp a little bit. Growing Rights of Vitlamac, it turns into a Cradle with as many tokens you're creating. That should be pretty good for you. Impact Tremors is a great option for doing damage to people on the board. With all those tokens, Goblin Bombardment also works because Goblin Bombardment will be able to sacrifice some of those tokens to do more damage. And then you can use something like a Smothering Tide for ramp options if you want as well. Technically, that should have been in the ramp section, but I moved it over to the enchantment side. Sorry. Uh, for card draw, you've got the good old Faithful, Sylvan Library, and Abundance combination. If you don't know how that works, message me. I'll let you know. But apparently, it's probably one of the best draw engines Green has. On the artifact side of things for upgrades, you got things like Skull Clamp, because all those tokens should be able to die when you equip it to draw two cards if you need an engine for that. Throne of the God Pharaoh is a good option there. It helps to sling some damage out there for just having your creatures or having them tapped at the end of the turn. And a ramp option here is Bootlegger Stash, because again, just like Crypto is right, you know, options in green for ramp are plentiful, and this one can help make all your lands now more useful at the end of the turn before your at the end of your previous opponent's turn before your turn, you'll have an option to tap all untapped lands to create treasure tokens, and that's always great. I will mention I didn't actually put down any of those buff artifacts that are out there. Uh, if you're going to look into the buff artifacts that give all your creatures plus one plus one, make sure you look at the ones that don't require you to choose a creature type. Just either color or just basic buffs, kind of like uh, the white side of things where they have just creatures generically get plus one plus one. On the Planeswalker side of things, there were a lot that I could have gone with here. I'll mention a couple, but I'll tell you that there are a bunch of ones that create tokens. But I'll start off with Elspeth Tyrell, and of course two more Elspeth Sons Champion and Knight Errant. They all create tokens, they all do other things that you want to do for this deck. They're great options, but there are other options as far as token creations. There's Garrick's out there, there's a whole bunch of uh, Red Chandras that do create tokens, so you can look at all them as well. But the ones that I highly, re highly recommend are the Elspeths. And the last section I always go over is the win cons and combos. Normally I'll give you a combination that you can do that would either be infinite or something like that. But for this one I'm actually going to go a different direction. I'm going to give you the I win cards. Uh, the recently Halo Fountain came out and treats a new Kapana. That's a great option with all the tokens. You'll be able to get that accomplished pretty quickly. And of course Epic Struggle, same thing. You'll be able to get 20 creatures on the board. The only problem you're going to have with these two is you have to make sure they survive to the, your turn. So those are what I'm going to give you as far as win cons for this deck. And that's what I've got for you for the Kubernetes Cacophony Upgrade Guide. This is the direction I would go in as far as token creation. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or just want to talk about the deck or any of the other decks and videos that I create, you can go ahead and contact me at bluebearsgames.online on Facebook. You can email me at bluebearsgames at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you when I have an opportunity. Or you can leave a comment in the section below, and I'll get back to you in that way. And then if you want to talk further after that, you can go ahead and contact me one of the other two ways. On top of that, if you're looking to help support the channel, there are a couple ways you can do so. The first way is actually just out of generosity. You can go ahead and do some donations to me. And the way you can do that is through PayPal at paypal.me forward slash bluebearsgames, at Venmo at bluebearsgames, or through Cash App at dollar sign bluebearsgames. The second way that you could help support the channel, this one actually gets you something for your money. You can go ahead and take a look at all the decks that I've made, and you can make a purchase of one or two, or maybe even five. I have 60 card decks available for sale, and I also have commander decks available for sale. So if you're looking at them, you can go ahead and take a look at any of my stuff on the Facebook page or through the Facebook Marketplace. They're all available there. You can see the, the logo that you need to look for, and all those are available for purchase. You can contact me at any time, and we'll go ahead and talk about how you can acquire one of those. And the last option is the freest of the three options. You can do me the favor of subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, when I get to my 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, somebody else will be paying for the bill. Uh, you can also like the video. Apparently, the analytics show that the more people who like your video, the more viewed it gets. So that would help me as well. Or you can share it out on your social medias, uh, whatever one you have, and other people will eventually start subscribing and watching more videos. So all three options are great and will help support the channel. That is my time for the week. I want to thank you for watching. Please join me again next week for another deck build video, and I will see you all then. Have a good week.